Is it recording? Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? It's me, Bryce, a uh, member of the 9th Texas Dismounted Cavalry, a reenactment group. And uh, uh, how are all of you doing? Let me know in the comments. In this crazy world of ours where everyone's dying and the economy is being dead. Well, it's time for a video and all of it. So, for this video, it's going to be a little bit different from the other ones. Uh, so the video will be uh, discussing the kit that I have for the 9th Texas Dismounted Cavalry. Uh, my accoutrements, my weapons, and all that other fun stuff. So first thing we're going to start with is that we're going to start with the hunt with the uh, Springfield Hawkins. Alright, so this is the Springfield Hawkins. You should notice how short the muzzle is. That's because it's not meant for infantry. It's more or less meant for dismounted cavalry, which is of course us. And you can see from the nipple right here, that's brand new even though the rest is dirty because last time it, it broke and we had to fix it because, well, someone, someone broke it and it wasn't me. The only time I nearly got injured from this rifle was when my friend accidentally double loaded it, hand me it. I fired it and boom, nearly took off my whole hand. That's why I don't trust him with my stuff ever again. <laughs> Second one is one that I really do not use all that much. This one is the Connecticut Valley Arms, which you can immediately tell that this is something more or less from for either hunters, farmers, or in the for Continentals during the Revolutionary War. This is a 45 cal, so it could not, so we would not be able to take a mini ball. Which, if you don't know what that is, that's just the standard issue of the Civil War. And you can immediately tell that this is more or less for like some kind of infantry or rifleman, not necessarily for dismounted cavalry. Which, of course, is true. That's why I don't use it all that much. Besides when we're, uh, well, skirmishing and such. Uh, cause this is more or less my grandfather's weapon, so... But of course, he don't do this stuff no more. Alright. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna go on to the boots and uh, the other stuff. Accoutrements, etc. Now, these boots I got really, uh good good price make sure you're aiming it at me a really good price at the sutlers because the last boots i had dog of course ate it or just tore into it so i had to get rid of it so these are very comfortable as well then we have my grandfather's canteen this is of course it says my grandfather's because i have to use this one because the other one the top right here the last three nights in a tomball, it uh, broke in half, and I do not, still don't know how. I guess something just came off or something, I don't know. So I gotta use this now. I don't really care what it is, as long as I get to drink something, I'm happy. Next, of course, is your good old cap. Uh, cap box. I'm sorry, not cap box, ammo, ammo pouch or whatever. Of course, inside where you would stuff your uh, cartridges, black powder cartridges. So, some of us have converted it into where it hits our belt, but some of us, like me, just put it on our sides, like usual. So, next, we have our belt, the belt, and uh, the cap pouch. So, you can clearly see that it says CS on it. Now when we're doing federal, I just usually flip it, so, because I don't have a union, uh, some of the union stuff. Stop removing your hand on the screen. And then we got, of course, cap pouch. We put in the caps to fire off the gun once you've done the process of reloading it and loading. Uh, then, of course, you got your good old knapsack. Where you would uh, stuff your uh, food and everything else in there, anything that you would carry. Now, of course, during the war, 
the Confederacy really did not like knapsacks just because they were just just because of the fact they kept slowing them down just made things heavier so they just decided to convert them into nap into bed rolls which is like you would put uh, your roll, the, your bed roll all uh, over you and with the rest of your equipment so it's more lighter that way so you don't have to keep on carrying a whole bunch of crap now we go on to my uh, clothing first thing that you can clearly see is that you can that this is a federal uh, frock coat. Put it on for y'all. Decent size. Now, of course, I really don't wear the frock coats a whole lot just because the fact that it's here in Texas, it gets incredibly hot. So I just wear something similar to like a like this my uh, battle shirt which you can sell is very fancy mm -hmm. I got this now you, this is another one the uh, battle shirt this is what most of us would usually wear especially if it's really hot considering of course I said it's in Texas it gets very hot that fun stuff I actually got this for a really decent price at one of their homemade stores but I have to at some point fix this because the button came off, or nearly came apart uh, during a battle because it got stuck on the cap and the nipple. On the nipple, so. And of course, you got your the average uh, shirt, battle shirt. This is just what I usually wear whenever I sleep in the tent or when I got nothing else to do. So really, they're just, just the same thing. I usually wear this as well over the uh, coat, especially when it's winter or when it's just not winter, when it's just really cold. Uh, then of course, you got my, my beloved good old Johnny Reb frock coat. You can uh, see that it says CSA on the buttons. Nothing too special, just the average uh, military uh, standard issued gray uh, coat. So, same thing with the U.S. Uh, with the Yankee buttons with the eagle on it. Mm -hmm. And the last part, the pants. Still need to get this fixed up a little. This course is what I always wear is the CSA. Nothing really all that special. Uh, and then the last is the Yankee one. This one's a lot more comfortable than that just because it's more lighter, has better silking on it or whatever. But I do really need to fix it just because of the fact it's too that. It's fine, it's just that I really need to fix this. It's just too, it feels too elastic elastic and the fact I need really need to fix the back because it keeps falling apart so I'll do that in the next event and really that's kind of it the next one I will show you uh, my pistol when I uh, when I find it somewhere in my house uh, but before it ends some reminders sorry that I have not been all that active school all that stuff money issues and just this whole COVID-19 issue, ruining all the events, so I have nothing sadly. But on a better note, is that on 30th of May, if you live in Eastern Texas, if you live in Louisiana, Louisiana, if, the, if your governor has allowed uh, free movement again, before all this happened, uh, please come to the event in Jefferson, Texas, and uh, on May 30th through the, I think the 31st or 32nd, please come i would be happy to see you guys and uh, if you want to join the ninth texas we're one hell of a group i will admit that and uh tomorrow i will uh talk about some other stuff i might do a live stream who knows what i might do so until the next time i'll see you fine beautiful people later and uh stay safe
Just don't touch people, please, with your hands, for God's sake. And see you guys later. Goodbye.